Okay, hey, welcome back to my channel, Jet Scale Models, and today we're going to go into part two of this Mini Art T34 engine set. Here are some images that come with the kit, in, and uh, you can see you can kind of go to town with some of the weathering and aging. Uh, these, I think, are computer generated images, but uh, it gives you an idea of what you can do. So, First off, what I'm going to do is start priming everything and then I'm going to get into the metallics. For my metallic colors, I usually like to use a lacquer based paint and Mr. Metal Color is my go-to. I find that it works very well with any chipping work that I want to do later on. You'll see later in this video that I ended up causing myself a problem by using a enamel based metallic color at this point. I should have just stuck with the lacquer. Um, later on when I go to do some of the pin washes and aging effects with an oil-based wash, it ended up reactivating the enamel paint and unfortunately or fortunately because at least you get to see that you can recover from making that mistake, I ended up stripping off the metallic enamel paint and having to start from square one and just use lacquer after that and I got the effect that I wanted in any case. So just be aware that you know your different solvents that are in your paints can affect what you hope to do afterwards with any kind of uh, aging or weathering effect.
Since I'm making this as a standalone sort of exhibit, I wanted to make a base for the engine stand and the transmission. As normally, I guess you would put this into a T34 model that you know you wanted to add some detail to. So I needed something that I can have everything mounted on and then I can have good alignment of all the parts as if it was in a model kit. Some of the parts are getting a priming of Mr. Mahogany Surfacer 1000 as opposed to the black Mr. Surfacer just because it's a different kind of a metal and maybe there's some rust involved when it comes to the chipping part. These exhaust pipe parts are not going to get chipping, but they will get a rusting effect later on, so this is still a good base. In the interest of adding some visual variation, I decided to use some of the Tamiya acrylic metallic color for the air intake manifold parts. After allowing the metallic colors to dry and cure for at least a few hours, I went back with some hairspray you can see here I'm spraying it and this will allow me to come back later after applying a top coat color and create some fine chipping that you might find in a used vehicle or older engine. After I spray the hairspray, I put on the top coat color, and now you can see here I'm using water to reactivate the hairspray, which will allow the top layer of green paint to flake off. You have to be kind of careful here, and it's a bit hit and miss. Sometimes it's more successful than other times. There's a bit of luck involved, and... Uh, you just have to pray to the modeling gods that everything is going to work out okay. When I do my hairspray chipping, I usually use Tamiya paints because they are a water-based paint that will come off very predictably. Whereas if you use other paints uh, like a lacquer or an enamel, often what happens is it creates a surface that it's very hard for the water to penetrate and get to the underlying hairspray to reactivate and allow the flaking off of the top coat color. Also, acrylic paint isn't that great. It's got a plastic sort of surface to it. Again, it sort of doesn't allow the water to get through. If you see other people using like a lacquer-based paint on top of the chipping fluid, they might get results, but for my money, and with my experience, the best paint for this type of effect is to use a Tamiya paint because it allows the water to penetrate into the underlying hairspray and that allows the top coat color to chip away. When you do the technique properly and with the proper materials, you shouldn't have to scrub very hard to get the paint to flake away.
After I was happy with all the chipping that I'd done to the flywheel and clutch part, I went back into it and drew out some more detail by hand brushing some Avalejo Model Air metallic color onto part of the flywheel. And um, this will be a good base for when I come in later with an enamel wash because it being a water-based solvent paint it will not be reactivated with the enamel solvent based wash that will come later so you have to keep that in mind water based paints will not be reactivated by enamel based paints and lacquer based paints will not be reactivated by enamel based paints You can see here I'm just using a q-tip to remove some of the excess and manipulate the wash to where I'm happy with how it looks. I don't want it to be too strong but I don't want it to be so slight that it's no reason to even put it on. I added the wash to the engine stand as well, and here I'm just taking off the excess. To add a little flavor, I added some AK Interactive Enamel Wash of the Light Rust variety. using some paint thinner on the brush to knock back some of the hotter spots and to blend it in to make it look more natural. Adding more and taking off as I go until I'm happy with the results. Next I'm going to use some graphite here in the form of a mechanical pencil lead just to give it a little bit of a burnishing as you might find on an old engine stand.
Okay, so next up I'm going to do some masking off of the radiator and I'm doing this so that I can paint the radiator area with a black and then come back with a dry brushing of a metallic color on top of that. Using this brush here, um, I got a few hot spots and further into the process I pulled out a different kind of a brush 
and it worked a lot better but this is all sort of just an undercoating anyways a lot of this won't even show up after all the other aging that I'm going to do Here I've taken some Tamiya buff and thinned it quite heavily with some water and it's going to portray a dusty kind of deposit. On top of this I'm going to be doing other things as well. It's all about the layers.
So for the concrete base that I'm making, I wanted to add a little texture. So I'm just using a little bit of glazing putty. Just mixing it with a little bit of acetone. Okay, moving on to the gearbox, I wanted to add a wash to it. So I'm using one of the store-bought washes you can get out there. And I'm thinning it with some paint thinner so that I can have a little bit more control over how it looks. I don't want it to be too strong. So I'm just using a little bit of paint thinner to regulate how much actually gets onto the piece. Okay, so I used enamel paint for my silver or my my uh, aluminum, and it doesn't interact well with the uh, the oil-based washes. So you know what? After trying to uh, deal with that, I don't know if I might just strip this paint off and redo everything. Maybe I'll do that just to show you that you can do that. If you're unhappy with how things look, you can uh, redo it. I kind of like this. This area here is kind of interesting, but I just don't know about the red because the red is starting to wear off here where it should be, you know. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to demonstrate how I strip a model. 
and redo everything because I'm not happy with what's going on here. You know, this one here is uh, looking pretty good though. I think, or is it going to all come off too? Yeah, the silver doesn't seem to be coming off this one. Maybe I used a lacquer base on this one. So I'm happy with that. All right. So that's to uh, turn the camera off. And I'm going to go get my stripping stuff. And uh, yeah, because I'm not happy with this. It's just the chemicals are all shitty. So I made this by painting it gray and then doing some spattering of different colors. It's good enough. I could do better, but you know what? As I said, it's just good enough for what's going on here. So now I've got this engine stand and I'm going to mount it on here. Okay, I think that's where we're gonna end this episode. Thanks for dropping by. Hopefully you'll come back for the next episode where we take this engine to the next level. Here you can see I've sprayed it out with a lacquer based metallic color. So in the meantime and in between time, that's another edition of Jet Scale Models.